Hi, Joe Connell, Sandpiper Pump. Today we're going to show you how to install an air end kit into an HDB inch and a half. Out front we have some examples of Sandpiper's genuine parts, wet end kit, air end kit. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man method and machine, but for video purposes some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any phase of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Air End Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the separation and preparation of parts and components during the rebuild. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques and procedures used in the rebuild of the HDB inch and a half are also applied to the commonality of the HDB2 and the HDB3. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, o-ring pick, 12 inch pry bars, sockets and or wrenches, 3 8 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 5 8 inch, 11 16 inch, 3 quarters inch, one and five sixteenths inch six point socket. Let's get started taking the pump apart. We're going to start with taking the manifold off. For video purposes, we're going to use a three eighths inch um, electric impact gun. Uh, we're going to flip the pump up here. On the HDB two and three, you're not going to be able to do this, but we'll go ahead and take the manifold off. Once you have the bolts removed, go ahead and take the manifold and set it aside. We'll come back to that. Take the gaskets off. We'll take the outer chamber off on one side. You're going to have two blind holes. You'll want to leave those for last. It'll hold the chamber in place. Turn the unit up on its side there. Take the chamber off, set it aside. We'll loosen the outer plate here off the diaphragm rod. Remember this on an older unit, it may take some time to get this thing off. It may be a little stuck, but work with it. Pull the plate out. Diaphragm sits in a bead and you may have to reach in and pry it out to get it out, especially with the thermal plastics. Take the inner plate, set the bumper and the inner plate aside. And then you can go ahead and take the opposite chamber off now. Set the chamber aside. Remove the diaphragm assembly. Set the bumper aside for use later. We'll take the air valve off next. Take the four bolts out. Gasket you can discard. You have the pilot valve underneath. You can go ahead and discard the pilot valve too. And then the final gasket.
Reach inside the inner chamber, pair of needle nose, you can pull the U-cup seal out. Do that on both sides. And then push the actuator plungers all the way in on both sides where the bushings are. That way you can get a socket or a wrench on the bushing and just remove the whole assembly out of there. And you can discard that. Complete that on the other side also. Let's take our main air valve assembly apart. Go ahead and take the end caps off. I'm going to take both sides off. Once you get the end caps off, you can discard the gasket and the bumper on both sides. Push the spool out, and you can discard that. I'm going to take a deep well socket, set it upright, make sure the socket is big enough to push the sleeve out, but small enough to still fit in the bore of the air valve body. Go ahead and open up your air end kit, lay your components out. Take the sleeve and spool first, push the spool out and set it aside. That is a match set. You can't mix and match components. Take your O-rings. Make sure you roll the O-rings down onto the O-ring grooves in each position on the sleeve. I'm going to put a light coating of grease on them. Grease is applied to keep the items from catching, binding, or cutting while assembling components. You want to inspect the air valve face, you know, inspect the bore, make sure there's no sharp edges in there, and apply a little grease inside there. Set the body on in, and then you want to push the sleeve in, twisting and pressing. Don't worry about getting alignment, just make sure you push it all the way down into the body. We'll self-align once you put the end caps and the bumpers back on. Take the new bumper, line the cut up with the pilot hole in the main air valve body. Put your new gasket on and line the key wedge cut out of the gasket up with the pilot valve port. And the end cap. Make sure you line the keyway cut up with the pilot valve port at the end of the body there. Install your four bolts. Tighten them down in a crossing pattern so you bring the end cap down evenly. Make sure you put the spool in. Don't force it in. You want to twist and jiggle it in until it drops in. This is a match set with a very high tolerance. And then you want to repeat the same process on the other side. Install the bumper. Make sure the wedge is pointing towards the pilot port. New gasket and end cap. Again, make sure your keyway is lined up with your pilot port. Make sure those are all aligned. Put your cap screws in. Tighten them down in a crossing pattern. You want to inspect the bead on the inner chamber, faces on the inner chamber, um, and the bushing inside there before we get started installing in components there. Make sure it's not oval. Take your new U-cup seal. Apply a little grease to it. The open face of the U-cup goes out. The flat face goes in. You're going to have to work it into the receiver. Work it with your finger. Make sure it's securely seated in there. And then you want to apply a little grease. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. Now we'll take our actuator plungers, install the O-ring into the V-groove that's on the actuator plungers. Do this for both of them.
then you want to apply a light amount of grease on it. Take your bushing and insert the actuator plunger. The flat head goes opposite of the hex head when installing the plunger. You want to do that for both sides. Work them back and forth a little bit. Take your actuator plungers, thread them in to the threaded port in the inner chamber. You want to make these hand tight. Don't over tighten them. That is a brass bushing. And do that for both sides. Next we want to install one bumper onto the diaphragm rod and we want to apply a light amount of grease onto the rod. Install the diaphragm assembly with the rod into the intermediate. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratches, or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Port side of the chamber faces in the same direction as your nameplate. You want to install the two blind hold bolts first. Um, this will hold the chamber in place while you install the rest of the bolts. Go ahead and install the rest of the bolts and then tighten them down in a crossing pattern. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. You want to clamp the inner plate into the vise. You want to make sure you get a hold of the bottom part of the plate, not up on the radius. We're going to install our diaphragm now. The natural bulge of the diaphragm faces out. So you want to invert the diaphragm. Put your wear pad on. Thread your outer plate in through the assembly. then torque to manufacturer specifications which you can find in your service and operating manual. Go ahead and put the opposite diaphragm assembly on. Make sure you put your bumper on. Thread the assembly on but don't thread it all the way down. You want to take a couple of pry bars. You want to get up under the diaphragm and you want to make sure you get under the diaphragm plate. Pull the diaphragm assembly across. Again, make sure you're under the diaphragm plate. You can do damage to the diaphragm if you try to pull that assembly across with the pry bar under the diaphragm. You want to invert the diaphragm so that the diaphragm seats into the bead. Make sure you get the diaphragm seated all the way into the bead. And then you can install your outer chamber. Again, inspect the outer chamber. The ported face of the diaphragm chamber goes towards the nameplate. Install the bolts into the two blind holes. Hold the chamber in place. And then you can install the rest of the bolts. Tighten all the bolts down in a crossing pattern. Go ahead and install the pilot valve next. Pilot valves come pre-lubed. Pull the pilot valve shaft out. Just inspect it make sure the lube's good. You may want to apply a little more extra lube on there. You have two gaskets. One fits over the pilot valve sleeve and spool. Doesn't matter which direction it goes on, just so long as you get, get it over the spool. The other gasket goes on the back side of the pilot valve. You have to make sure you line up the center port 
with the pilot hole in the pilot valve. On the main air valve assembly, the pilot hole will have to line up all the way through. Next, you want to push the actuator plungers out of the way. With thermoplastics, you may not be able to get one to push all the way over, but you do have to invert the spool in the pilot valve. You don't want to set the pilot valve spool down on top of the actuator plunger. You'll bend it or break it when tightening it down, so invert the, the spool on the side that the actuator plunger will not push all the way over. Install your pilot valve with your two gaskets. And then we're going to install the main air valve assembly. Again, make sure the pilot hole on the main air valve assembly lines up with the pilot hole in the gasket in the pilot valve. Thread your four bolts in, tighten them down, hand tight. You want to install the gaskets on the ports of the outer chambers. We'll set our manifold assembly up. Make sure that you have the suction and discharge ports in the right direction in and out marked respectively in the suction side needs to be on the bottom we're going to take our retainer wedge the entry face of the wedge needs to be pointed towards the chamber install our nuts these are lock nuts we want to do this in a crossing pattern That completes our airside rebuild of our HDB inch and a half. Our rebuild included sleeve and spool, pilot valve, actuator plungers, actuator plunger bushings, gaskets, and O-rings. If doing a complete rebuild, also see our wet side video. Or for additional information, find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com or contact after sales support at service.warrenrup at idexcorp.com. Thank you.